Do you hear that? I have been hearing that sound everywhere lately. It... <sighs> Shoot. That's been happening a lot lately. Anyone else just wildly sick of their phone just taking over their life no matter what they do? It's like all of the tools I use are trapped behind that tiny little pane of glass. I miss products being a joy to use, not something dangerous that I get sucked into for half an hour and waste my life away. So let's find some. It's tricky though, because not all retro gadgets are really equipped to be out in the modern world. They're just gonna hold you back. So are there any retro products with modern features. Well, I found some. And going through this list, they're pretty pricey. And I was really hoping that there was someone out there that was gonna review them for me so, you know, I didn't waste my money. And then I remembered, oh shoot, that's my job. So I'm gonna do that. So we got the custom job retro style TV. So it looks like a beautiful retro TV, but it has Netflix. Yeah, Netflix kind of sucks right now but you get my point. So this thing might not bring me any nostalgia because it's a bit before my time. Yeah, it may look like I'm nearing 50, but honestly, that's whatever long COVID I've had for the past three months. But the point is, is it's more beautiful than any TV I've ever owned. It looks like I get to choose custom legs, custom knobs, custom speaker fabric, custom paint, custom wood species. <laughs> Am I... Am I building this? I hope not, because that price tag is not cheap, three grand. But that's that's three grand for the non-custom one. And of course, we're gonna buy the custom one. Yikes, that is 5K. Add to cart. You guys ever been to one of those old school train stations or airports? They have these like loud flip boards that show you your arrival and departure times. Picture this, put that ish in your living room. That's basically a Vesta board. It's a smart, modern flip board. I know what you're thinking. What problem does that solve? Yeah, stop thinking that, just stop it. So they have this cute little ad that kind of shows you how it works and all of its use cases. There's something about new beginnings. You're excited for the change, but you know things will never quite be the same. Oh, that's cute, sending the girl off to college. Here's to the ones who brighten your day. And then she sends him a message on the Vesta board that they just happen to be in front of hugging. <laughs> no, it tracks, definitely realistic. That new can be a good thing. Vesta board. Yeah, why can't she escape these boards? I'll be honest, I watched this ad a couple of times now, and every time I watch it, the dad just straight up appears out of nowhere. Like he was like pretending to like not work, and then like his wife saw him and she, he, uh, I got the box you, you were looking for. So the board is built with 132 of these flip boards they call bits that you can, I guess, rotate to achieve the right character in each bit. Oh, look, here you go. Magical sound. This is what the flipping characters sound like. When it looked like the sun wasn't gonna shine anymore. Am I hearing that right? Put a rainbow. Is another tab open? <laughs> when it looked like nope. Three grand. Here we go. Add to cart. Have you ever had a little brother? How would you describe him? Classic? Thick? Strong body? Me too. The new retro cell phone H999, which happens to be a self-proclaimed classic little brother. This wasn't an accident, by the way. They really bear down on this everywhere on the product page. Sure, it looks like a phone from the 90s. So side tangent for phone lore, I couldn't figure out why this phone had the name Little Brother, because in America we called them brick phones. So I searched the internet, I literally couldn't find any reference to Big Brother other than these knockoff Chinese phones. But finally I found this rather odd video that you're seeing now. And it's the only explanation I could find. First invented by the American company Mo Motorola. Big Brother entered China. Well, due to the size of Big Brother and due to the fact that people who used it were mostly big brothers in the business world, this thing quickly became a status symbol. But they have added an insane amount of modern features to this thing you would have never expected. Take a look at this screenshot, for instance. There's 20 different features here. Not to mention there's even more if you keep scrolling this never ending page of features. I'm gonna spare you the boring features like radio and change the ringtone, which they highlight. But the one that's got me most curious, Voice King. I don't know what a Voice King is, but I suddenly find the desire to be one. Like I feel like I was one once but that was a long time ago in a forgotten era. But we're just getting started. One of its best features, which we're definitely gonna test, is strong body. Because this little brother has the strongest of bodies. So strong, in fact, you can break walnuts open with it. But don't, because 
easy on the walnuts. I'm supposed to put this thing in my pocket? I sure hope it's easy on the walnuts. It can be used as a charger, but to charge what? Your other phone? Oh yeah, to charge your other phone. They thought this was such a good feature that they gave themselves an award for it. Oh, not, <laughs> not just once, but three times. Go ahead, you can clap. Yeah, let's just get in and buy it. So I found another gem. Yes, that is an Android landline phone. And yes, it can do all the things your Android phone can do, but with the added benefit of being connected to the wall like a retro corded phone. Why does this exist? Well, luckily we don't have to guess because they tell us. They have kindly given us all the applications for this device. Number one, removal emergency. I've stared at this for a good minute now and I have no idea what's going on. Did this person pack everything in their house in their car because of some sort of emergency? Like how does this phone help that situation? How do you have that much time to pack if you're in an emergency? I'm not sure where they even got this photo but that person's definitely living out of their car. Second application, it's just named ship. Take this with you if you're going on a ship. I'm almost positive cruises don't have landlines. It's kind of in the name. Even if you use the SIM card, there are no cell towers in the ocean. Third application, remote area. Again, it's remote, likely no cell towers, and even more likely, no telephone lines to plug into a landline. Fourth, car. Oh, we'll test this. Last use case, camping. Why on so many levels, why? Oh, I see, because leisure. It makes sense now. Let's add the card. Next up, the Black Mix Hour of Glory Nixie Clock. I'm not sure if this one is a modern product with retro features or a retro product with modern features. Actually, what is the difference? Okay, so a retro product with modern features is a product that was designed a while ago, but it had new features with it. Think of this, like a typewriter, but with a display on it so you could backspace and before all the mistakes get made. Right, right, right. right. But a modern product with retro features is something designed recently that has yeah. some retro features. Take, for instance, a computer, but they removed all the apps and everything so you just have a typewriter experience. It's the same thing, shut up, it's the same thing. What I do know though, is that this clock has burning light and sound. Yeah, it sounds like a transmittable disease, but I'm 80% certain it's not. Although it gets a little gray when above it, it also says exploding head. Even if I'm not reading into that, it still sounds like a terribly dangerous feature, but I'm not gonna worry too much because I can break dance to the radio as one does when anxiety hits. I know, I know. I'm giving this product a hard time right off the bat. So let's get into, you know, some of the more serious features like the horn cover. $500 for this Nixie tube clock. And I'd be worried if it didn't have all the positive reviews that it has. Oh, I feel better now. So let's say I hate what Spotify has done to music. I don't, I think it's extremely convenient, but let's just say I hate technology and I love yelling at clouds. What am I gonna carry around, a record player when I stand in line at Target? I don't think so. So this is a Sony Walkman TPS L2 portable cassette player. This product started the portable music revolution, but this product has a dirty little secret. It's not actually the Sony Walkman. It's a modern knockoff. You should have seen your face, you're like, DPS L2, a $2,200 modernized TPS L2. What on earth makes it $2,200? Well, we're gonna find out. An MP3 player, you say? Boring, you say? Don't worry, because the DPS L2 contains its funds under the clamshell, don't we all? Basically, when you open up the clamshell cover where a tape would normally go, there you're gonna find the main screen of the device. And all the pictures that I can see, I'm kind of worried my fingers are a little too fat for this $2,000 device. Oh, okay, here's the clamshell design section. It says, it was found to be completely different from its appearance. I imagine I'm just gonna get shipped a completely different product. Under that bullet point, there's another that's just completely empty. I guess I could just add whatever I want there. I'm gonna put totally worth the two grand, we promise. I'm gonna be honest, I can't trust anyone though who can't keep the time. I feel like I'm gonna get this product in a year and they're gonna be like, Psh, we warned you, we couldn't keep the time. So one of my biggest curiosities through all the research of this video was whether or not I could find a retro gaming system with modern features. Most gaming handhelds these days either just play retro games in a smaller form factor, or there are handhelds that run newer games with a skinned version of Android. Android, that's not retro. That's what I'm trying to escape here. But then I found it a shining gem in a desert of handhelds that were tainted with conformity. It's called the Playdate by a company called Panic. I don't know, this, I think it's a cute name. This one can't do anything that the other handhelds can do, but that's what makes it kind of awesome. This is the first gaming handheld that I've seen that behaves 
like a retro gaming system, but with the black and white screen, the simplistic buttons, but it also has a really inventive and modernized twist. Once you get it, you start to receive two brand new games every week over the air, completely unique games to this particular system, the Playdate. Plus, if that's not a modern enough twist for you, I've got something special for you. It has a crank. If you look close, depending on how you crank, it changes how you play. It's either really clever or really stupid. Their ad feels just as goofy and unique as the product itself, which isn't really a bad thing. Say hello to Playdate. Oh, I like it. Yeah? Yeah. Thanks. Now look at this. The display, extremely high resolution. Is there a backlight? 400 by 200. In what world is that extremely high resolution? I know they're probably being cheeky, but... Is there a backlight? No, but the screen is super reflective. You can even play it by candlelight. Really? Maybe. I'll give it to them. This was probably the smartest way to pitch the lack of backlight as an intentional feature. That, that is not cheap, especially when they don't let you wind your crank in the dark. Oh, now I get why they call it a play date. <laughs> Add to cart. So the classic little brother phone turned out to be, well, <laughs> I don't know why I didn't pick up on the thousands of context clues in which I could have figured out that this was a tiny phone because it's a little brother, not a normal size brother, but it's tiny, so tiny. It is just, how's this supposed to crack walnuts? Oh, it's so tiny. <laughs> also, I'm unsure if this product was previously used. <laughs> Why is the, the screen already smudged with some sort of oil? I haven't unboxed this. I haven't looked at this. This is the first time I even realized that it was this small. Whoever packaged this had some sweaty hands, yo. Unsurprisingly, all of the features were there. You got the ringtone. You got the make a call feature. You got the flashlight. That's that. <laughs> it's not even close. You got the ability to charge another device with a port on the bottom. There's our USB. <sighs> there was even Snake, the game. Oh, oh, okay. I got this. No, oh. Okay. Did I pause it? But I did not find Voice King, sadly. I know you guys would be curious, but there was no Voice King. I looked. <laughs> What's more disappointing is I couldn't technically even test it as a phone. So I don't have a SIM on me right now, but it doesn't even matter. These Chinese phones don't actually work with US frequencies anyways. So that's a bit of a bummer. So I can't test it as a phone, but I can test its strong body. Can it actually crack walnuts? Well, here's the thing. I have just the nuts to find out. These. Locked for freshness. <laughs> oh, they have names. Anna and Sarah. We're gonna breeze past that. So, these are huge. Shut up. Dude, shut up. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use the back panel of that TV so I don't wreck my counter. Oh shoot, I definitely will wreck it because there's still a screw in it. Strong body, put to the test. Wow, it cracks nuts? Ha, huh, crazy, I wish my phone cracked nuts. Whoa, 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 <laughs> let's not get ahead of ourselves. Every time you set the phone down, it turns off. <laughs> what the heck? After I cracked a single nut, y'all, <laughs> it would just randomly turn off. And honestly, I'm not really surprised by that. <laughs> but who cares if it's got a strong body? Who cares if it even cracks nuts? I want to know, does it have super soft buttons for elderly people? Oh, and business people. <laughs> Despite this being... I'm gonna say it, a note. I still really enjoyed the FM radio. It allowed me to listen to music broadcasts, news consultations, skits, and of course, the opera was wrong. I've been saying that for years, guys. This next product, the Nixie Clock, you're gonna love this. When I first set my eyes on this, <laughs> well, let me show you. Here we go. Look at that. You see this? It's an incredible clock. Nope, there's nothing here, never came. It's been months since I ordered that. So with a bit of sleuthing online, I discovered that that was a Kickstarter campaign. So I just bought Air. Don't worry, I know you're upset. 
rightfully so. You got nothing for the money that I just spent. What's that? You want me to spend more money so that you can get what I paid for? Fine. To be frank with you, I'm uncertain if this is a typo or if that's the actual name of the clock, but everywhere the name exists, they just call it a blub. It's modern feature, you ask? A single blub, bulb, that tells the time. You can see it flashes each number to tell the time in sequence, and that definitely won't get annoying at all. I was gonna opt for the normal clock, but then I realized it was nearly $2,500. Then I found the bomb clock, but luckily that was not available for purchase. Those two being out of the question, we're just left with the blub. I'm always left with the blub. The blub is here. I'm in possession of the blub. I couldn't be happier to start blubbing. Bringing Nixie 2 back to life. Well, <laughs> you were for a moment, <laughs> and then I broke it. This is a very unique can. This thing arrived in a can, y'all. <laughs> in a can. <laughs> to be honest with you, I feel like I'm about to open a can of beans. Wait, do I need a can opener? <laughs> no, no, no. No, it's, it's like a paint can. <laughs> Luckily, I've got just the thing. This gives me anxiety just because it's like the only time I ever open up something like this. It's paint. There's something that could damage the entire space I'm in. Give me my blub, bro. Do I need a can opener? I sat there like an idiot trying to get a blub out of a can. What is that sentence? Okay, I've been opening up the wrong thing. Okay. They definitely packaged it well. So when the clock arrived, I'll be honest, I was most excited to see if this thing was even legitimately called a blub or if it was just a typo. And we can confirm, ladies and gentlemen, that it is, in fact, intentionally a blub. Oh, that's nice. Okay, I will say this is beautifully crafted and shipped well, because it's in perfect condition. <coughs> but I am not. <laughs> this thing is made well, though, from a material standpoint. Three, two, one. Ooh. Oh, that's beautiful. That is quite beautiful. Zero, nine, two, nine, two, twenty-nine. Is that... <laughs> Is that what it's saying, 229? It's definitely not 229, and I have n absolutely no idea how to set the time. Big shock, I needed a master's degree to set it up. How hard can it be to set up a clock, right? Well, considering there's only one display, and it only shows nine digits, and there's only one button to set it up, and that it doesn't come with instructions. No instructions. Do I gotta go on blub.com? This is the most complicated clock I've ever used. And the irony is it's technically supposed to be the most simplistic clock. If all of that wasn't enough for you, this is what the instructions look like. Configuration of this parameter tells the clock the actual time and date. This configuration parameter expects the time and date in format. Wow. Y, There's Y, one, two, M. Three, okay, four, so five, year. Six, every single seven, position eight, is one nine, digit. Push 10 set positions I have to remember every position. Here. Okay, so now it works, but does it work? So I specifically wanted to test this image I found on their website of the blub being like a nightstand alarm clock. This worked as expected. See, I don't get good sleep. Normally I need to check every hour. If the hour is before six, then I force myself to go back to sleep because I always just keep waking up and waking up. But this clock, when I woke up, I had no idea what the order was. Like, was it 3.43 or was it 4.33? Was it 5.57 or was it 5.75? Yeah, I know that last one isn't a real time, but you're telling me you see 5.75 a.m. in the morning and you're not thinking twice before you're knocking out for some more Z's? Doubt. Heavy doubt. Okay, so it doesn't work as like a nightstand alarm clock, but what about a desk clock? The problem was no matter what, the flashing numbers just distracted me all day. Okay, what about my living room? That's probably the best solution I found, but at the end of the day, the clock that had already been there was just easier to tell the time with. <laughs> so I put it back. So now this thing is just collecting dust in my product archive, probably destined to never be turned on again. It's a no. So about this weird MP3 tape player thing, it's technically called a DAC, a digital to analog converter, because digital sucks, man. Ones and zeros suck, man. I'm not a robot, man. I'm a man, man. And I want my music to be ma manly. Yeah, so a DAC takes digital music with ones and zeros and it turns it into analog music before it hits your eardrums. That's like taking a hundred by hundred 
image and like turning it into something 4K. You're gonna get some stuff you didn't anticipate. But this is why it costs so much. And it's completely arbitrary. That and also the fact that it is modeled after the TPS L2 that had its own entire moment in history. This is actually the Sony TPS L2 and the thousand dollar price tag. It's a little wild for a used cassette player, but the nostalgia in this thing is strong. This product was like pretty much the first product that you were allowed to take all your positive vibes with you when you never really could previously. Before that, you were just walking around with the voices in your head to keep you company. And I don't know about you, but I personally get zero good vibes from my intrusive thoughts. So it's not a surprise that this Walkman became a cultural icon, which manifested in a ton of different ways. Naturally, there was competitors, but there were also knockoffs upon knockoffs upon knockoffs. This particular flagship product by Sony came out in 2019 just five years ago. Oh, it's been in the box for four years and it still powers on. This is an actual legitimate Sony Walkman. Fits perfectly in the case, which looks like a TPS L2. Even Sony can't let it go. You might even remember seeing the Walkman in Guardians of the Galaxy. Raise your hand if you know what this is. What about a 3D printed one for your Star-Lord costume? Yeah, printed and primed. Have you ever thought about buying a poster to let all the other middle-aged dads relate? It's already home. We're good. What's that? You want a Lego version of the TPS L2? Boom, built it. It's a little small. Let's just go all in and make it our personality. Wearing it. <laughs> How about we spend the kids' college tuition on a glorified MP3 player that looks like the TPS L2? Oh, you had me spend the kids' college tuition. The DPS L2, $2,200 in the flesh in this tiny little box. <laughs> Not only that, but I realized, you know, to even accurately test this thing, I need to actually get some audiophile headphones. And obviously that's expensive because why wouldn't it be? So we're gonna be in like three grand just to listen to some slightly better quality music. Ah. I shouldn't review it before I've reviewed it. Let's just get into it, shall we? So I really don't know why this product is making me more angry than like any other product I've ever seen. This tape, that is finely aged tape right there. Look at that thing, that, that looks spot on. Wow, it's cold to the touch too. That's a good sign, that means it's metal. This packaging, I expect more for a $2,200 package. But that's pretty nice. This is a huge device. This is so big. Why would you carry this around? It's so big. Luckily, this thing seems to be made with really high quality materials. Can't tell if that's metal or not. It's metal. I had to touch it to my mouth. I, my fingers aren't sensitive enough. Solid construction, one might even say strong body. And the buttons, solid. There's a little on button right there. Play, pause. Ooh. Oh, independent volume control, very similar to the actual TPS L2. So I will say the software on this thing is sparse. Music browser. This is possibly the worst way to interface with music, to have to open this up, turn the on button on, and then use these buttons on the side. It is the absolute minimum work you can put into developing software for a device like this. But this thing is basically a brick if there's no music on it. So what's that process like, Matthias, from the past? Did you love it? Did, did you love it? So this was a bit of a process. In order to get the appropriate quality of music to play on this device, I found hdtracks.com. Who would be surprised by this? There's barely any music at this high of quality. So let's go to Hans Zimmer. Great. We have some tracks here. Oh, but wait, let's try to find ones that are 24 bit 96 Hertz so that, you know, we're not wasting our money with this $3,000 purchase. What's that? There's only two? Let's download them because we can't stream anything because this device isn't capable of streaming. Okay, so we're way past any of the positive vibes I was hoping to harvest from this thing. <laughs> and we haven't even turned it on yet. But when I turn it on, I have a specific test. I want to check to see if all of that money and time and energy is better than what's already in your pocket. In front of us, we have the Aurelios hooked up to some Sennheiser headphones with the exact same album in Spotify with the new AirPod Pros. I'm going to listen to this one first. You're not going to be able to hear anything, but you're just going to have to trust my response. So let's do it. Enter. We're gonna just go with the main theme from The Dark Knight. I do love that track. Maybe this will make me feel good. Got a little tape in there. That's a cue, that's fun animation. And I'm gonna press play on the actual top of the device. 
incredible. It sounds incredible. Sounds really good that you can hear all the texture, but I'm just not so sure that I can't with this. Let's not blow up my ears. So here's what I'll say. The audio coming from this combination is fuller. It's wider, but for the price compared to this, this sounds pretty dang good and you get everything else with it. And I'm not so sure it's not just these. That marginal difference in audio quality is just not worth the headache of trying to go through all the loopholes of using this, let alone there's barely any music out there at the quality that even makes a difference. So you're like, Matthias, are you gonna say more? I think we know it's a no because you seem annoyed unboxing it, because you seem annoyed just using it and trying to get music on it, because you seemed annoyed that it costs as much as a small used car, and you seemed even annoyed at the very concept that a DAC even exists. And to you, I'll say, you don't know me, but you're right, it's a no. So let's just slow down, okay? Let's just, let's just, let's just take a breath, all right? We're getting heated here. This video was supposed to be about finding joy in these retro products and bringing them into the modern era. So let's just, let's just cool it. Come on with me. So now it's time for the play date. And this thing, this thing really put a smile on my face. The play date by Panic at the disc. This is designed by Teenage Engineering, some of the, the best device designers. I just love their designs, they're beautiful. Before you even turn it on, it's just a solid, little, slim device. Buttons feel good, screen's good, it's made well. And it seems like the actual software is made even better. So the entire interface is just carefully designed, even down to the sound design. It's a very pleasing experience. Just listen to how you turn down the volume. The UI on this thing has such attention to detail that you just don't see in products these days. As you buy the games, they show up in these little sweet little packages. So for instance, if I open one up, that's fun. We love that. It also comes with a few pre-installed games you can play. The ones that it comes with are pretty simple games. It's cool because you can actually go onto the website and immediately buy more games for it and they'll just be uploaded wirelessly to the device instead of having to wait, let's say weekly for the releases, which I do have mixed feelings about because I discovered that the games unlock weekly for you. So the games already exist. So in other words, if someone bought this a year ago, they already have all those games and you're just still waiting for them. That's like if I made all my videos for the year, but just didn't upload. There we go. Upload is done. Why don't we just upload them all? We have them all done. <laughs> no, 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 no. You have to make them hunger for it. You have to make them need it. I'd prefer that they were like universal seasons, you know, maybe even once a year for 12 weeks, you get a new game every week, but everyone gets it at the same time. I feel like that would create a little bit more of a community feel behind the whole thing. But honestly, that's a small gripe. So let's talk about the crank. Construction wise, feels solid. Software wise, it just works. And I confess when I first saw this thing, I thought it was gonna be used for charging the device. Which by the way, is a very real thing. You wind this crank until it charges your device or or until you fatigue, which usually happens first. These things suck. Obviously it doesn't charge it, but the more I used it, the more I was like, who asked for this? Oh, I'd be killing you right now if I had a crank. I mean, why won't they add a crank? Mm -hmm. Sure, it's a fun little quirk, I guess. But if the game I'm using allows you to use the D-pad and the A and B button instead, I'm definitely always opting for that. Honestly, I'll go as far as to say I avoid playing the games that are crank only entirely. There's something just monotonous about winding it. I don't know what it is. It's just so small and the movement is just so tedious. Luckily, a lot of the games rarely use the crank and there are some that just don't even use it at all. So it doesn't really bother me too much. But a more serious complaint that I actually have is the lack of backlight on this thing. It's hard to see the thing indoors with proper lighting conditions. So once you've decided to play this thing, you're like constantly trying to hunt for angles. This chair is so squeaky. You're hunting for lighting and you're hunting for comfortable angles in which you can also see your screen. So instead of doing that, I just opt to bring around a book light and then I just straight up play like that. But now I'm carrying two things and I'd rather you just make this a little thicker and figure out how to put a backlight in this. The real question I know all of you are asking 
is can you actually play it by candlelight? Really? Maybe. Hello. Welcome to our little play date where we find the truth. It's a weird play date. Gosh, <laughs> this would be a dangerous precedent to be gaming near candlelight. I can see it. It's not an enjoyable experience. I'll tell you that much. My face is dangerously close to these flames and I feel a compelling need to get this closer and to get my face clo- Well, all in all, I've been using this thing pretty consistently. I've traveled to Idaho with it. Heck, I even went to Disneyland with it. It's perfect for places like that. You know, low stimulation. You know those times when you really just wanna check out but you don't really wanna get lost in the death that is TikTok doom scrolling? And now you can lose yourself in something that just won't make you hate yourself as much. Also, kids love the crank. It must be just me. I must be too old for it. <laughs> and word to the wise, if you do give your kids the play date, they're gonna beat your high score by like two times in the first 10 minutes. But this is a dope, and honestly a welcome addition to my collection. First impressions of this tablet corded phone was mixed, to say the least. But I'm not gonna say the least, I'm gonna say more. <laughs> <laughs> I just now had a concern. I can't read that. Is nothing in this? Is there no English in this? <laughs> Here we go. Here's the big reveal. It's enormous. Don't break it right away, bro. That is a full-size tablet. <laughs> I just kind of want to open this up and just reveal like an iPad in there. <laughs> I don't know, what are you talking about? So it seems like every one of these little products is throwing me a twist. Like, I'm not sure if I'm just not reading descriptions, which is, you know, I've been known to do, or if it's just weird products that shouldn't exist. Here we go, phone land. It's covered up. The spot for the land line. This may be a bad idea. We're gonna do phone line. No! Oh! What? <laughs> Damn it. There's clearly a spot to put the module. They just didn't do it. That needs to be a phone line because otherwise, how do I? There is, there's a battery in this. Technology helps us do better. Space exclamation point. <laughs> sure, perhaps this won't be so bad. I mean, it's in English already. Oh, it's all in English. That's straight up just an Android tablet. Hey! <laughs> I know I'm gonna get a lot of comments about the last phone that I just tested about. You didn't even put a SIM in it. You didn't even try. So let's try. Oh, that's a massive SIM card. I don't have a SIM card that big. All right, I found a SIM card and then I found an adapter, surprisingly. I don't know why you'd think I'd have that. I don't like have a lot of gadgets and gizmos. It thinks there's no SIM in there still. It says there's no SIM. SIM card change, tap to set up. I mean, I don't have service here anyways, so there's only one way to find out. So this thing has a battery and a SIM card. The only real world use I can think of is, you guessed it, car phone. You know, for the individual that has a home phone, they have a work phone, and now they have a car phone because there's no better way to tell you that they're more important than you than from the road. Although now that I'm in the car, I realize there are laws against holding a phone. Does that apply though with corded phones? I think it might make it more dangerous. Either way, this thing doesn't actually... Okay, the screen's not even on. Do you hear that? I guess I'm dialing. <laughs> the screen is not actually on. I have to do some sort of special... Hey, we got the screen on. Literally, every time I wanna see the screen. The truth of the matter is, I've been driving for, I don't know, 10 to 15 minutes kind of all across my valley, and all of the problems that this thing has are a bit of a moot point, considering the screen fell asleep again. I have yet to see a single bar of service, which leads me to believe that the wireless bands that this thing operates on do not work in the States. I can only be important in China then. Really wanted to call up my wife and tell her how important I was. But I guess that's gonna have to wait till I actually am. Anyways, I think I accidentally stopped at a park and I have a corded phone. So let's get to the next product. I was immediately impressed when I opened up this thing. In case Bailey thought I didn't know, this little note says Vestaboard. But I, I figured it out. <laughs> 
It was like a 60 pound box, so I knew there was some good old fashioned metal in there. Oh, okay. This was the shipping box. This is the product box. This thing is heavy too, by the way. Okay, wall mount, for sure upside down. Oh wait, will it say something if I put it right side up? Ah, that was cool. <laughs> I can just tell how well made this thing is. Let's hang it, plug it in. And it was super simple to hang because of this template thing that they included in the box. This is basically a guide so that when you're hanging it up, you're not just drilling holes in random spots trying to figure it out because you don't know how to hang things or hold things. Or at least I think it was super simple to hang. The person that I asked to hang it didn't have any complaints. What? I was busy that day. <laughs> and what a sweetheart. He left the best part for me. This thing is so solid. I love it when products use the right material. Have you noticed that literally everything these days is just plastic and there's like, you know, nothing wrong with plastic, but metal, <laughs> am I right, men? <laughs> so this front plate, full metal, comes off to reveal all the bits. This is like a steel frame. All of these little bits, each one of these can come out. But what was giving me a lot of anxiety is when a company really nails the first impressions on a product, can the product even live up to its own hype because I haven't even turned it on yet. I've had some amazing looking products not even turn on. This is the part that I've been waiting for for months. I don't know what I expected. I think I know the problem. <laughs> yes. Ooh, this is very satisfying. Did, why did we stop? <laughs> I think that's done. I've got the app right here. All you need is love in this code. Dude, this thing scares me, bro. So it's loud. This video doesn't really do it justice, but it's loud. I could be minding my own business, just browsing the interwebs and <laughs> I can't do the sound. I mean, maybe I'll get used to it or maybe I'll just have to bring an extra pair of underwear every time I go to the studio. But it's not just me. Anyone nearby it just gets completely startled. There's really no avoiding it. In fact, it jump scared Sam's dog the other day. So maybe Vestaboard can do a little research into making flaps that are a little less noisy. <laughs> I mean, I have a soft closing toilet seat, so that's something. Get started. Continue. Yeah, that was it. That was all it took to set up. And this is where the fun begins. So when I open up the app, there's just a bunch of random things that you can throw on the board. I can have favorites, I have drafts, there's a history of everything that showed up. It looks like there's a bunch of different apps in this like little app store. So a bunch is an understatement. There were so many apps. So here are some highlights. There's flight times, your calendar, all kinds of art, bonus points if you can identify them, a world clock, journal prompts, this weird palindrome app, and then there's a days since last YouTube upload. Oh crap, I hit the year mark. And of course, dad jokes. These are some tired jokes. To the person who invented zero, thanks for nothing. I'm not coming up with these. This is just programmed in here. <laughs> oh, I found a subscription service. <laughs> this product was about to be perfect. So close, Festiboard, so close. Automate messages with an ever-growing selection of content and integrations. Three years, less than $7 a month. $250. I know subscription services are the norm now, and there's a lot of use cases where they're completely valid, but they're just gonna always and forever suck. Especially where I feel like this is such an expensive product, they could have easily hidden that cost in the cost of the actual device, like make it $3,200. <laughs> so if I wanna use any of the apps at all ever, I have to pay a subscription fee. It says less than $8 a month. Obviously I have to because otherwise I can't fully review this product. But I'm gonna give them a pass on this entire subscription service thing because it actually looks like they're spending that money in development of a lot more apps. And they just keep coming up with ideas. Like this app store is shocking how many 
ways they've figured out how to use this. Connect YouTube. Keeps trying to connect it to some other YouTube channel. Rose Thorn. <laughs> I definitely have more subscribers and views. I don't know, I, this is the first video in a year, so I don't know, has it gotten that bad? Sick, yeah, that's, that's what I remember. But not all of the apps worked like I expected them to. So, I'm a bit confused right now, because in that little ad, I could have sworn I saw a little girl text her parents who were sitting right by the Vesta board. That doesn't exist in here. There's no get a text. There is, however, an app called Guest Send. So I set up that app, then I'll basically send whoever I want to have access this little web page. They can input their name and then the message at any point they want. So if someone wants to put their message on the Vesta board, they have to actually go to a web page and input it there. How are you doing, mom? Truth be told, I told her an hour ago, so we're good. All things considered, I give the Vesta board a dope. Tip of the hat to you, Vesta. So right when I got this retro TV, there were some major red flags. I'm a bit concerned. This is how we received the box. I'm gonna have some help unboxing this. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> ah! Very good. Oh, that plastic wrap felt like it was actually the thing keeping it all together. I'm worried about this. For some reason, we just kept finding controllers and remotes. Oh yeah, there's a mouse. But there's also a TV remote. Another TV remote? It was like a clown car where the clowns just never stopped coming. Ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. Whoa! So this thing was beyond difficult to set up. Oh, what? Bo Since there are so many devices in this thing, there are three, literally three different modes of controlling the volume. So if one of those things is off, <laughs> forget it. You are not hearing your show. And that's if you could even get the volume to turn on. Pro tip, do the unthinkable, take it apart because that's what I had to do in order to find out that all of the plugs inside in this internal power strip that I found were in fact unplugged. Most likely due to shipping, so that's unfortunate, but still. <laughs> I must not have looked at the product page clearly enough because this thing was a lot more than just a retro looking TV with Netflix. Input switch to game console. <gasps> what? Game console? There were so many ROMs baked into this gaming system, I was shocked. There were thousands and thousands of ROMs. Not only that, there were some ROMs that shouldn't even exist. And also, I couldn't even get to play no matter how much I wanted to play Muscle Unicycle Boy, it just wouldn't load. But I'll give it to them, that's usually just a normal emulation issue with just retro systems. But if you ever get Muscle Uniboy working, I wanna know. But these were just my first impressions. I haven't even tested the product yet, technically. And the best way that I can figure out how to do that was to like watch a movie every day. And then I was thinking, that's just not YouTube enough. How about this? Five movies in one day. And for the first movie, we have a special guest. Ladies and gentlemen, we have Brian joining us from, well, nothing now. Team Edge is Done. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. He's got a new channel, Cantina. Check it out, link in the description below. First movie we're gonna watch is Dune. 10 o'clock in the morning. Do you want snacks? I've known you for 20 plus years. <laughs> I am offended. You've known me for 20 years. Do you think I don't have snacks? I'm prepared. And we mutually insulted each other. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do this. <gasps> I liked it. <laughs> So much whispering. Short man syndrome. So many movies. Dude is not blonde. Just got a blonde guy. <laughs> There's so many of them. Huh? So when I did take this TV apart, I'm pretty sure the creator wouldn't have wanted me to do that because inside it, I found a 32 inch Insignia TV and a Wogri soundbar. That Insignia TV 
is on Best Buy for $89. And the Wogri, I think for like $39. So <laughs> it's like $150 for that setup. <laughs> It's like $150, guys. My guess is this thing probably cost $400 to $500 to actually put together. And it cost me $5,000. There's something so ironic about putting the cheapest TV that money can buy in what is going to be the most expensive TV that money can buy. But you know, you're not buying it because you really want a good screen. You're buying it because it looks like a beautiful retro TV. And you'd think that would be the redeeming factor, but there were like chips in the paint and there were like places where the paint was separating. So that was just kind of a bit disappointing. For context, let's compare it to the last product we just saw. This is only three grand. The precision and attention to detail and construction was nowhere near this. This could probably be a dope if it was like 1500 bucks, you know, given that labor costs a decent amount. But for five grand, it's a nope. I was so surprised by all of these products. Some of these products were so complicated to use when they looked just so beautiful and simple. And I found out that it it really is just the simple products that win in the end. Simple in what they set out to do, but also simple in how they allow you to achieve it. But I also think it comes down to your personal preference. If something is a joy to use and it doesn't get in your way, well then to you, my friend, that's a dope. I don't, I don't know why I winked. I don't know how to end this.